lessons from a tree. Trees have always been the most penetrating teachers. They live in tribes and families and forests and groves and revered even more when they stand alone. They are like lonely persons, but not like hermits who have stolen away out of some weakness, but rather like great solitary beings. In their highest bows, the world rustles. Their roofs rest in infinity, but they do not lose themselves there. They struggle with all the force of their lives for one thing only. To fulfill themselves according to their own laws, to build up their own form and to represent themselves. Indeed, nothing is holier, nothing is more exemplary than a beautiful, strong tree. And when a tree is cut down and reveals its naked death, its wound to the sun, one can read its whole history in the luminous inscribed discs of its trunk. In the rings of its ears, its scars, all the struggle, all the suffering, all the sickness, all the happiness and prosperity stand truly written, the bad years and the good years, the attacks withstood, the storms endured. And every young farm boy knows that the hardest and noblest wood has the narrowest of rings, that high on the mountains, And in continuing danger, the most indestructible, the strongest, most ideal tree grows. Trees are sanctuaries. Whoever knows how to speak to them, whoever knows how to listen to them, can learn the truth. Trees do not preach learning and precepts. They preach undeterred by particulars, the ancient law of life. A tree says, a kernel is hidden in me, a spark, a thought. I am life from eternal life. The attempt and the risk that the eternal mother took with me is unique. Unique is the form and veins of my skin. Unique is the smallest play of leaves in my branches. And unique is the smallest scars on my bark. I was made to form and reveal the eternal in my smallest special detail. A tree says, my strength is trust. I know nothing about my fathers. I know nothing about the thousands of children that every year spring out of me. I live out the secret of my seed to the very end. And I care for nothing else. I trust that God is in me. I trust that my labor is holy, and out of this trust, I live. And so when we are stricken and cannot bear our lives any longer, then a tree has something to say to us. It says, be still, be still, look at me, 
Life is not easy. Life is not difficult. For those are just childish thoughts. Let God speak within you, and your thoughts will grow silent. You are anxious because your path leads you away from mother and home. But every step and every day leads you back again to the mother. And home is neither here nor there. Home is within you. Or home is nowhere at all. A longing to wander tears my heart when I hear trees rustling in the wind that evening. If one listens to them silently for a long time, this longing reveals its kernel, its true meaning. It is not so much a matter of escaping from one's suffering, though it may seem so, but rather it is a longing for home for a memory of the mother, and for new metaphors for life. It leads home. Every path leads homeward. Every step is birth. Every step is death. Every grave is mother. So the trees rustle in the evening when we stand uneasy before our own childish thoughts. Trees have long thoughts, long breathing and restful, just as they have longer lives than ours. If we don't listen to them, they are even wiser than we are. But when we have learned how to truly listen to trees, then the brevity and the quickness and the childlike hastiness of our thoughts achieve an incomparable joy. So whoever has truly learned how to listen to trees no longer wants to be a tree. They want nothing except to be who and what they are. For that is home. And that is true happiness. Lessons from a tree. Herman Hess. Namaste.